right, so you got your sim experience loaded up. Uh, if you did not get sim experience loaded up, where you placed your order on, ag on the sim experience website, there will be a link in there to download Sim Commander 4. Uh, so let's assume you went ahead and followed those instructions and you got it. Uh, then it's going to ask and look for all your games in your, in, on your hard drive. And then these are the ones it found on mine, right? Now, if you already have Sim 5 loaded uh, and you want to just add your AccuForce steering wheel to it, all you're going to want to do is come to the control center and go to settings. Um, yeah, settings. Let me blow up this up just in case you're on like your cell phone or something. Control center, settings, SIM device manager, and then there you see AccuForce steering system. You'll just click that on and uh, it'll you'll answer yes to the both questions that come up, right? And that's it. Uh, then it's added and you will notice if you go back out and go to where your regular settings are, say ACC in this case, and you will see the AccuForce steering wheel there and all the settings underneath it, right? Usually comes in as default settings and stuff. So uh, that's all you do. So pretty easy. Now let's dive into what settings do what, right? Okay, so this is gonna probably be about 30 minute video here. I can literally spend days uh, talking about this stuff. Uh, because it is it's very uh, in-depth if you want it to be or simple if you don't all right uh, but I don't know any sim racer out there that does not modify force feedback effects whether it's in your game or it's it's on your wheel itself so yeah buckle up there everybody does it even if they say they don't want to <laughs> Uh, but let's go ahead and go back into the settings, sim steering, uh, I'm sorry, AccuForce uh, steering system. I'm going to blow this up, and I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of this here. Uh, you got your general tab and your pedals pad, uh, pedals pad? Your pedals tab. Now, uh, you use the pedals tab as if you have your pedals directly plugged into the AccuForce uh, box itself there, right? Um, put this magnifier off to the side here. This is what you're going to save to your actual wheelbase itself. Uh, let me re -say, say this again. This is what saved to your wheelbase itself. If you close this software out and you save these settings to your controller, which is your wheelbase, and you never launch Sim Commander again, this is what forces are going to be applied smooth in degrees of rotation, stop spring, damper, and regular spring. That's what will be applied from it and then at that point uh, you're done you don't have to do anything else if you're just happy go lucky with adjusting force feedback within game settings which you can actually get some pretty good results doing then go ahead and do that but if you really want to unlock uh, the full you know force of, of uh, the AccuForce I would suggest stay tuned and learn a little bit more about it okay so to dive into this some more here you have these six presets, they have a high peaks allowed, obsolete, don't use it. I don't even know why they have it there if it's obsolete, but uh, they should take that off. Uh, but recruit, soft, default, high, responsive, and, and responsive peaks allowed. As you go up in the levels, the voltage increases, which means the output of the force is going to be higher. Uh, responsive peaks allowed and responsive seem to be the same. And uh, high is a little bit lower, defaults lower, soft, and recruit, and so on, right? Uh, that's just kind of how it works. And I, I recommend you actually looking at, and I'll pull it up here, Mock Racers AccuForce settings. And he has a really good um, breakdown of those forces. Where'd he go? It is, bear with me, they're right there. And he actually spent the time doing this here. AccuForce Pro, oops, sorry. Stock rim and button box, amount of wheel rotation within 300 milliseconds per DX units of force. That's the firmware and tested in 2015. So quite a while, ways back, right? Uh, so anyway, you can see here, Recruit is the blue line. You know, it's very soft. Uh, doesn't do a lot. Default, he didn't have soft in here. He just has Recruit, so... You can tell they've actually added to it uh, since this point. But 
uh, the carry on. Default is default. Some people say default gives you the most clarity uh, of feedback. Uh, I haven't experienced that. I think it gives you good clarity even on high or, or the higher one uh, responsive. But uh, you can see high is, is more force and responsive is even more. So this is amount of wheel rotation in degrees from center to left center within step time to 300 milliseconds. Okay, so how much force it takes the wheel to turn left, right, you know, in this in this degrees, right? So it's measuring the force going both ways. Anyway, that gives you some indication of uh, what it is and uh, pretty helpful as far as that goes. Um, and that's the AccuForce one there. But let's go ahead and continue on. Now, I generally run it at high or response. Actually, for the wheelbase itself, I just keep it on responsive. Uh, you will notice this halt feedback when sim experience wheel button box is removed. What that means is if you check this on and you remove your your stock AccuForce wheel and then plug the phone cable from your button box from it, right? Uh, it's going to halt all feedback to your wheelbase, which is good. Nothing wrong with that. However, if you're like me and you use a modded wheels, like uh, I use my sim racing machines mod for my fanatic McLaren wheel you will soon discover that even though the wheel works you're not getting any feedback and you're gonna be wondering why and uh, so I finally remembered I had this checked on in the beginning so I had to go back and click it back off so I suggest you just leave it off and uh, and roll with it that way but intensity leave it up uh, smoothing, smoothing is the smooth, smooth of the, of the wheel. I just run default and forget about it. Degrees of rotation, I generally run 900 degrees. You can go 1080, whatever you want, right? It goes up to 4,500 degrees. So that's <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty dang high, I guess, if you're doing a, uh, well, you know, if you have truck simulator or something like that, you might want to turn this up more, you know, to 1080 uh, degrees. So I, I can understand that if you're doing Euro truck or something like that. Uh, stop spring. The stop spring is just the hardness of the spring. So when you turn your your wheel left or right, when you hit the said degrees of rotation, in this case 900 degrees, it's going to hit a stop on the wheel, right? And it's going to want to bounce your rim backwards. Uh, follow my mouse drag here, okay? <laughs> so uh, it's going to bounce your wheel backwards. Well, how hard of a stop do you want? Do you want it to hit like it's hitting a, a literally a, a brick wall, then you want to turn this up more. If you want it to have a little bit of a bounce back, a little bit of a softer hit, uh, then you can uh, leave it less. I leave it at 6.3 and forget about it. Seems to be adequate and a good uh, good setting. It's a default setting and it, and it works good. Now your stop damper, I leave that off, but that's basically how soft do you want it after you hit the stop screw, stop spring. So when you hit the 900 degrees and it stops and you want to push past that, you want to push past that stop, uh, this gives you the softness of, of how much resistance is past that. Uh, ho hopefully that makes sense, but uh, that's what it does. Uh, really at 6.3 and higher, this is you don't even need it. But if you're running say like 2% and it, you can hit the stop and easily go past it, this is how, how much uh, resistance you're going to get past the stop. They said stop. All right. Okay. So that's that explained. Let me go back to 6.3. Now let's move on down. You got the spring. That's just your, your centering spring, your friction, your damper, and your inertia. You, all wheels tend to have a little bit of this built in. And I leave it at default and don't have any problem with it like that. Uh, you, you basically, you initially generally want to have the least amount as possible, uh, but it seems to be beneficial to at least leave some on uh, under testing with it without the Sim Commander software. So I just leave it there. Uh, you, but you can adjust this uh, accordingly as if you could in the Sim Commander software uh, to reduce your oscillations. Uh, this is where you're going to want to do that. Uh, if you're not using Sim Commander software, so and that's something you're going to have to tinker with uh, to get it. So uh, friction is basically just the, how much friction you got in the wheel. 
you know, the dampers, the, the dampening of the wheel itself, the inertia is once the wheel's in motion, how fast it goes in that direction, right? So um, that's pretty much that, what that covers. All right, so let's say you got all that done. You're happy with it. Well, you don't know you're happy with it yet because you haven't tested it out, but at least you got something to start with. You want to hit Save Settings to Controller, and then it saves it to your actual wheelbase itself, right? Uh, be sure to slap your rim on there, and while you're here, it hits uh, Set Wheel Center. Align your little, uh, you know, the leather red stripe up center, up, you know, center your wheel the way you want it. Doesn't matter if your unit's mounted upside down or however you have it mounted. Center your wheel where you want it. Hit set center, and that's it. Um, I'm not going to set center because mine's already set. Uh, but I can say save, save controllers and say save successful. These settings are now saved to my actual unit itself. So there you go. That's the easy peasy part. If you don't want to use Sim Commander anymore, you can close it out and you're done. Uh, then you're going to be forced to use in-game settings uh, from the games itself, which is what you're already used to anyways using. Uh, however, if you want to unlock really the full force, uh, the golden nugget of the AccuForce is their software. Uh, it is, is uh, really, really good, and you're going to want to spend some time at least messing with it a little bit. Uh, for example, you can run... You know, Project Cars 2 has, has, I thought had decent force feedback with the Jack Spade stuff. Uh, but then I noticed with the Jack Spade stuff, I didn't really like it with the Aki Force, so I went back to Raw. Uh, but you can, once you turn on, say, no Sim Vibe, and then you start using Sim Vibe, you immediately feel the difference. Uh, everything becomes smoother, uh, more transparent, forces are higher. Uh, so, Without the software, uh, it's not quite as good. Uh, now, it doesn't mean you can't spend the time in the software as far as the game goes, but sometimes the games only give you so much leeway, so much volume that you can use, and you max out, where this software gives you loads more. So, I want to cover some of the things of what what does what here, okay? And, and kind of the ones you'll want to look for. So. Just to dive into it real quickly here is, uh, let's, you've got all these games recognized, right? And what do you do with them, right? So you, if you want to launch a game, you're going to double, you come back over here, double click on this, it'll launch your game. In my case for Project Cars 2, there are some bugs with uh, Sim Commander at times, uh, especially with me using motion. And the reason I say that is if I come launch Sim Commander here, it launches fine, but uh, and it'll launch the game, but sometimes it doesn't pull in the forces for some reason. Don't know why. Uh, so what I ended up doing was launching Project Cars 2 through Steam first, waited for Project Cars 2 to load up, and then I came over here and double clicked on, on the setting that I wanted. If I wanted this setting, I'd click on that one. If I wanted the extra mile one, I'd click on that one, right? And you can, once your game's up and going, you can change between settings all you want, and it, it just starts re-registering the new settings. So that's really cool. Um, however, the default settings that came with the wheel, and that's why I named this one Project Cars 2 Default, right? Is that was the one that loaded up. This one doesn't work with my game, no matter how I launch the game. And and I think that's where some confusion will come from people uh, that may be saying, hey, I'm not getting enough force feedback. Uh, that I was expecting, or it's muddy feeling, or, or too spiky, or whatever it is. No matter how I change the settings, nothing's doing nothing. And that's because SimVibe never really even loaded. It's just pulling it directly from uh, the uh, actual, I'll show you, from your actual Sim Device Manager AccuForce Steering System. It's pulling it from that. You don't have the leeway of setting things here like you do in SimVibe. So it doesn't matter what you change here in the output mixer, if it's not loaded in the game, it's not going to work. Uh, you're not going to get those effects, rather, right? So uh, make sure you do it. A good tattletale that I've learned to do is, is you know, you double-click on the one you want, come over here to your engine RPM. If it's off, turn it on, max it out to 50%, and if you feel your wheel shaking from the engine RPM at setting still, you know you're loaded from Zenvibe. That's my, that's my go-to. 
So it's a little quirky. Uh, and, you know, some games you may launch and you're like, holy cow, it feels great, you know, and you're not even using SimVibe, but the actual settings you already have in your game seem to match up good with the with the uh, AccuForce steering settings and, and you're happy, happy-go-lucky, right? Not knowing that it could get even better. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, that's the go-to. That's what I suggest you do. Leave it on. Whether you want to use it later or not, uh, then turn it off. But let's get into some of the settings here. And I want to explain some of them uh, as well. Oh, and real quick, if you have something you like, uh, let's say this AccuForce steering here, and it's, I called it V2, right? But I could easily name it uh, GT3 setup because that's really what it is. This one's set up for me for GT3 cars. Oh, sure darn it. GT3, right? Uh, you don't have to, you just click out of it, click on something else, it doesn't matter. It saves automatically. There's no save button for this software. Uh, if I like this one, but I want to make it for road cars, but I like all my output mixtures to be for the AccuForce. Notice I don't have uh, the, the the shifter and all that stuff set up because I don't use this software for that right now. I'm using my next level racing, racing uh, motion and that's handling my tactile there. But uh, but I, I want to have the same one. All I do is hit duplicate and here it is. You're automatically put on the AccuForce steering V2 GT3 dupe. <laughs> Uh, that's the duplicated model. And you keep all your same settings as what you had, but now I'm doing road cars and I don't want it to be that strong, so I want the wheel weight to be a lot less. And then boom, that's where it is. And I come over here, I see, oh, I got this duplicated one. I'll double click on that one, launch it when I'm already in the game, and switch. So that's how you can easily switch to profiles while you're in the game. All right, so in, uh, I'm gonna delete that one because I don't want it. If you want to delete it, that's all you do. Hit delete, and it goes away. Make sure you don't delete some of these. Now, let's do a real quick backup uh, before we go too much further in there. Oops. Let's say you have one just perfect, and you, you, you don't want it to crash, or you don't want something to be lost or accidentally deleted yourself. Go to export right here. Click on the one you want. Go to export. Export to... Uh, install and drive file or share it on the owners club. Uh, you want to have your own copy first, so export it. Pick a directory. I have AccuForce downloads, and these are what the files look like. Export it over. This is very handy because I spent some time uh, doing some adjustments, and I was trying to work out some software bug I was having, and so I saved off all my stuff uh, really quickly before I just reloaded uh, some commander from the start. And really what I was chasing down, uh, just to let you know, was uh, why uh, when the default settings come in, like for Project Cars 2 or any of these, why it wasn't loading into the game. Still haven't figured that out, but it's not. Uh, so what I have to do is, and you may have to experience this yourself, so before I get into the settings more, let me explain it, uh, is I will go to New, and I'll say From Scratch, and I will name it whatever. We'll just call it PCARS2 right here. Uh, test, because this is my test, right? I'll come down here and I'll pick the game. Maybe blow this up here. I keep forgetting to blow it up. If you're on PC, you see in this one-to-one, -one, but on, on your phone, you might not, so I'll blow it up for you. Uh, come down to the game, whatever game I want, which is Project Cars 2, and I'll just leave it universal. If I want to sh show this one as my favorite, then you'll click that box. If I want to enable this in-game on screen display, uh, you'll click that box. You'll want that one clicked on as if you come to the bottom of the screen, it'll be a, a red line, and you'll be able to make adjustments to your output mixer while you're in-game instead of um, alt-tabbing out to this. But anyway, that's it. Uh, and then I'll come over here to output mixer, and I'll start adding the stuff I want. Like, I don't want... Send five chassis. I don't want seat, pedals, wheel, shifter. I don't want any of this stuff. I can just delete it. Select that tab. Delete. Select that tab. Delete. Delete. And delete. But I just want AccuForce steering. So I'll go and add an effect. And generally I just copy what I, I've seen on other, other ones. And I'll say game force feedback. I'll say OK. And then I can turn it on. And I can play with that. I can enable that there. Boom, just like that. 
uh, just keep on doing that the, add the ones you want engine RPM okay want that it's, it comes in at zero I say I want 50 percent and he, here's your RPM levels and stuff that you can adjust and just add the ones you want right so that's how you do that and then when I'll go ahead and launch this PCAR 2 test the game recognizes it so I don't know why it doesn't recognize the default but it does recognize it when I do that so there you have it if you're having that issue that I had uh, now you know I'm gonna delete this one though nope. delete okay now let's jump into the software sorry about getting a little sidetracked but these are important topics to cover and I want to be thorough for y'all guys and gals out there uh, let's go to project cars 2 Acu4 you know the one I was just messing with right uh, this is what everything does if you want to auto tune you can use the auto sorry about that you can use the auto tune wizard uh, while you're in it and say auto tune create and uh, it, you know, I guess I can show you that real quick. Auto tune. Oops. Oh yeah, it's highlight. So synchronize, reset the defaults, which will reset everything to default in this particular profile. Synchronize the currently detected devices. I don't use that one, uh, but auto tune. I have used the reset the defaults. Auto tune creates the effects you want it from a recorded lap. Go to next, and AccuFor steering wheel, and then next. Reset to defaults before applying auto tune. Oh, all right, hold on, cancel. Oh, I don't want to mess that one up. Let's go and do a duplicate first. Alrighty, and now I got a duplicate, and then I'm gonna do this duplicate. I'll mess with that one. Auto tune next. Uh, Accu4 steering. Reset to defaults before applying auto tune. You can leave it on, doesn't matter. Um, and then pick your game, Project Cars 2. And since I'd already did some laps out there, it had some data in there for me. Uh, so let's just say I want uh, uh, this rally one that was 0.38 seconds. I'm going to pick my, uh, zoom up again for y'all. I'm going to pick my fastest lap, right? Uh, 38 seconds right there. And you see it highlighted. It's like a little bit grayer, right? It's hard to see this, but that's what it does. And come down here to Intelligent Peaks. And I don't know what this stuff does, but I'll leave it default because that's how they explain to do it as well. Uh, so you remove peaks that occur in less than this percentage of samples. That's to really, uh, remove the peaks uh, under that percentage, right? So that makes sense. And then remove peaks that occur in less than this percentage of samples. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. But, you know, I'm not a uh, software engineer, so I'll leave it, I'll leave it there. Hit next. And then it gives me this message of everything it just did. And I say, okay. And then I say, finish. Boom. There you go. Now you'll notice in over here, I have an Audi, blah, 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 Quattro. Even though my first, it first said AccuForce GT3 duplicate, right? I stepped on that whole profile and changed it to this. So be careful which one you're starting with. Uh, if you're starting with one that you don't want to step on, duplicate it first, and then you're going to step on it, okay? All right, so that's one way, right? And that's going to pull telemetry from what you did out on track, and that's going to give you a really quick and easy setup. I don't necessarily want all this, so I can turn it off, but these are the settings it recommended based on what it was feeling. Uh, even steering force, even steering feedback foundation. I find this one useful to use for the uh, auto tuning wizard when I'm trying to figure out how much feedback uh, foundation to use. And this one's like 95%. Other ones will say 133 or, or whatever, right? And it's giving me gain force feedback at 95%. Uh, so this is a kind of optimal thing. You can run a few laps and uh, and come in here and set it, and then love it or don't or start adjusting it from that you may like more road bumps so you come over here and hit click road bumps and see your default is 35 to 28 percent you're like ah okay i like a little bit more uh since this is a dirt track i want hard bumps to be a little bit more intensive 
and I want my road rumble from, you know, my, my gravel underneath my car to stay that amount or maybe a little bit less. And then go out on track. Or, man, that's too rough. These big bumps are too rough. Let me up to smoothen a little bit. You get the idea? So that's what you do. And it saves automatically. And you can do this while you're in game. You can alt tab out or you can go to uh, the bottom of the screen of your game. There'll be a red line that comes across uh, as long as you have enable in game on screen. And when you're in the game, any game you're in, it has to be in windowed mode to work. That's key. It's got to be in windowed mode to work. All right. So let's move on. I like that. What do all these settings do now? Okay. I think now we're going to get to it, guys. And the one gal that's probably listening. All right, so uh, with the magnifier off, AccuForce steering wheel. What this does, and you know what? I have a quick little picture guide here for you. Boom! Do you like that, man? I tell you what, man. That's my boom Hauser uh, mimicking. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little silly. AccuForce steering wheel. This takes out the rust spikes overall. I leave it at default 18. Actually, since I wrote this, uh, I leave it on zero, and I just add it if I need it. You don't need to add smoothing unless you unless you're getting some weird spikes, and then add smoothing. And I actually like adding it here as opposed to the game force feedback smoothing. You can add it in either one, or you can you can duplicate your efforts between the two. Is what I noticed. So intensity leave on 100 percent. So then give you the 100% of what you set uh, for your wheel, you know, like your high or your uh, your high or soft or recruit or whatever. Uh, game force feedback setting. This one here, I think, gets confused. All this has to do with is your wheel weight. Uh, how heavy of a wheel do you want? If you're in a road car, you may only want the wheel at 15%, right? Because it has power steering. And it doesn't matter where you have this wheel weight. Your effects down below, your road bumps, your front suspension bumps, um, your, uh, your smoothing, all these settings that you have are not affected by this. This is just your wheel weight. So if you want a really heavy wheel, crank it on up to 100%. If you're like me you have it to 100%, that doesn't have to do with the 13 newton meters that are coming out. It's just how heavy the dang wheel is. And in a long 30 minute race, it gets kind of tiring on your hands. So I tend to usually run it around 60 to 60 to 100 percent, depending on the car, right? Um, there was some notion about 95 percent, and I noticed when you do your default settings, uh, Sim Commander puts it at 95 percent. Someone said that that was uh, so all your effects below are coming through, so that that's why they set it to 95 percent. I haven't seen that to be true or false, to be honest with you. I don't know. Uh, maybe some, some experience uh, experts can uh, uh, comment below. Hopefully some experience will comment below too. Uh, they did on my other videos. So thank you for watching, guys. But uh, anyway, that's what my experience is with it. Enable dynamic force feedback. Uh, this one seems to check it on. That way you have the extra 20% feedback uh, from your wheel so your forces bump up to like 15.6 newton meters remember this is 13 newton meters sustained torque right you know when you have those other uh, midge motors and, and all that out there on the market you know that's 30 newton meters right 30 newton meters is, is a heck of amount of force but that's at peak that doesn't mean it's sustained it's generally the golden the, the rule is is half the peak is what it sustains at so 15 newton meters is what it's sustained at all the time. Peaks are kind of like when you hit a wall or, or a really bad off track excursion, stuff like that, right? Uh, so 13 newton meters is pretty powerful. Uh, this gives you the extra peaks. All right, so gain force feedback smoothing, it just does that. It smooths out all the rough, rough bumps, all the spikes and stuff. Works the same as the top one. Um, the hierarchy would be the top one, right? Uh, if you had that one on zero, then it's going to pull from this one. It seems like you can double down on them is what I've experienced. Uh, but yeah, I generally just mess with the top one and don't worry about this one. I'll leave it off. Uh, stem st uh, Steering Feedback Foundation. This is basically takes away all the canned effects that are coming from the game itself. So all the weird spikes you may get, like in a set of course is a great example. Uh, takes them all away, and it is using what 
this foundation thinks it should be. This is really good to use if you already went out on track, turned three or four laps, get your best lap in, and did the auto-tune. This is when I would recommend using this one. And then go ahead and turn your game force feedback off. You can use them, however, together, and I have noticed that has been kind of a popular thing to do. Sorry about the jumping around there. A uh, popular thing to do is, is a lot of people will go, um, where's my intensity here? Game force feedback intensity. You know, they'll have it around 65% and then this one around 25%. And together they're equaling about 100% of, of feedback, right? Uh, and, and that's kind of what I've been seeing from the owner's club people are doing. And, and honestly, for Project Cars 2, that's what I got a, a really good feedback from. Project Cars 2 feedback in a direct drive um, stock setup, what you're really used to, sucks. But <laughs> when you... When you get to the direct drive, you have so many choices that you can make it not suck, right? Uh, some games you will find out that um, they're not designed for these high-end direct drive wheels. They're designed for your mass market wheels out there uh, that, uh, that need these weird rumbles and these extra spikes and stuff. So you can feel something when you have a Logitech G29, right? Uh, but once you get into, say, uh, Fnatic V2.5, uh, you start turning down some of these canned effects. But you can't turn them all off. Where this setup with the direct drive, you can turn everything off. And then you just adjust everything the way you want it. You don't want road bumps. You don't have road bumps. So software is very powerful. All right. So uh, go on engine RPM. Like I said, this is my tattletale. I generally keep this around 40%. That's what I like. This is how much engine vibration you get. Uh, if you dive down in the menu, you can actually set your lope. Uh, so, you know, a C6 Corvette is going to be different than a Ferrari, so to speak. So, uh, I'll show you that on the other tab, but this is explaining it real quickly for you. And let me just take y'all, y'all take a screenshot of this. One, two, three. Screenshot. Okay. All right. So, uh, and that way you can blow it up on your phone or whatever and look at it later for reference. All right. So, uh, Front suspension bumps, bumps, I like this one. Uh, I tend to turn that one up to 100%. I know it says 400 here, but I was just playing around uh, just to see. But yeah, that's a good example. You know, crank one up all the way, turn everything else up, off rather, and see what it feels like on track. And then you'll you'll soon know front suspension bumps will yank your steering wheel out of your hand and throw you across the room, okay? So uh, at 400%. Uh, so you're going to want to turn it down to something uh, sensible. <clears throat> you can make this thing as unsensible as you want or sensible as you want. Uh, it just depends on uh, your level of pain. <laughs> so, anyway, road bumps, uh, that one's great. It's very, very close to front suspension bumps. And in fact, sometimes I just leave one off and just leave this one on. It just depends on the game. I like to experiment and tweak. Uh, hell, I do so much tweaking sometimes I hardly even drive. But uh, anyway, this one's uh, pretty good. It handles your road bumps and your road texture. So a lot of times I'll turn my road bumps portion off and turn up my road texture because I like a lot of feel in my uh, texture of the road. When you're going down the freeway in your car, you know, unless you're in a super fine Cadillac that absorbs all the bumps and you don't feel any of the, uh, the, the uh, concrete or the uh, asphalt underneath you, then you'll appreciate the texture being turned up. So racetracks are, are, are uh, about the same roughness as your city streets. They just don't have the potholes, but they do have a lot of ripples in the track from braking marks. So if you've ever been on a real racetrack, you'll, you'll know this to be true. Uh, they're not exactly as smooth as you think unless you went to like a brand new track that just got done before had a bunch of uh, cars on it to mess it up basically. So. Uh, but anyway, road bumps is very handy. Dynamic oscillation. You're going to want to use this one. This is basically when you're sitting at a standstill at the line, and I've experienced it, and I know you have to, um, your front wheel, when you let go of your steering wheel, is starting to oscillate back and forth, left or right, for whatever weird reason. Don't know why. Well, you can change that. For one, this intensity is how heavy the wheel drag is, so you feel like you're dragging a tire over, right? And another thing is, is the oscillation. So when I go to, oh, where did it go? I closed that one, I know, but uh, let's see. Boom. 
oh here we go stationary when I go to dampening to apply when vehicle is stopped this is the defaults at 40.55 uh, if I need less dampening you know you can basically set this to where it doesn't have anything I have no it has no bad ill effect with it set here all the time and it seems to take out all the oscillation actually actually one great point about the direct drive wheel is I hardly have any oscillation issues really ever uh, so, well not ever but on some some cars you do get them uh, just the nature of that particular car or the lack of programming in that car you'll get it <clears throat> but now you have control over it uh, now your oscillation here and I'll just expand more because my other one was uh, limited there but here's another one for moving right they used to be combined but now they're separated uh, the intensity here is is basically when you're going down say uh, Daytona and and you get you know this weird shake through your or Indianapolis track or whatever you get this weird shake on the straightaways for no reason uh, this is where you can control your oscillation there so these two are great for oscillations uh, and then one more I didn't have it added here let me add it real quick uh, friction and inertia uh, let's see spring oh, fluid dampening all right so spring I don't ever use because um, most games have enough centering spring that you don't need it but if you run across a game that doesn't have hardly any, any centering spring go ahead and add it and you will notice one percent goes a long way two percent even further uh, and you can just click on this dial okay instead of trying to move this to a specific spot you see it has notches just click past it and it'll go one increment at a time okay just a little trick for you uh, I wish you could just double click on these numbers and type in a number you want but you don't you can't uh, you'll even notice like uh, the game will come up with like a 133.3 percent and you can never get 133.3 percent right uh, but the game came up with it anyway uh, back to the dampening uh, or the oscillations rather these three are your friend for oscillations as well uh, I would only use the other two one for stationary that handles that uh, use that one specifically for that and then if you're experiencing moving on the front straights then yeah add that uh, and you don't have to have 100% you can add just maybe 20% just whatever you like whatever solves your problem okay uh, I mean, generally I don't have to have this and on but your friction your inertia and your dampening uh, all work pretty good friction is just how much friction you have in the wheel when you turn it uh, inertia is once it's in motion it stays in motion how much motion so if you got a wheel turning to the right it's it, you know with the speed of it and then you got to counter react it back the other way and the speed of it back that way and it actually kind of helps with oscillation too from what the sim experience guys said in their little videos uh, but yeah seems to work good the fluid dampening is basically like turning your wheel through um, you know hydraulic fluid like from your uh, from your uh, power steering fluid right uh, so that's what that does these three are kind of hard to figure out I think uh, as far as what to set it as but you know you can do it I tend to leave them off because the less I need the better the more uh, real feel I'm getting on the track than not having these on at all and if I'm getting some weird oscillations I can't get rid of on a particular car I'll start bumping these up really about the same level as each other and then uh, and then see how it feels you know and then I may turn I noticed that uh, some experienced guys they have their inertia up a little bit more so I need to experiment with that if that makes a bigger difference with that being a little higher than these two as far as stopping some oscillation but anyway that's just what I'm finding there uh, see what else uh, did I cover the views let me see here's the views uh, summary view tab view and all that tab view just changes the way it looks right but you notice you don't have the smoothing here no more uh, where it goes is down here at the output uh, settings here at the bottom you get that up and there it is and this is basically uh, per game so even if your wheel has it set as responsive you can change this one to soft right and uh, that's what it's going to do for this game but if you close out 
the Sim Commander software, it's going to default back to what your wheelbase is set at. So just keep that in mind. That's what that does. Um, but you still don't have that extra smoothing. And so I've noticed when I was trying to adjust that on the fly, because that's what I use the most, I don't have it. And I, uh, I found the summary view. Go back to summary view, and there's your smoothing. You can adjust your smoothing <laughs> again. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's it for the software, I think. I think I covered everything. Uh, we covered the from scratch, the install and drive, telemetry log, and, uh, oh, install from in drive. Yeah, did I cover Yeah, I covered that. And then uh, telemetry log, uh, which is the same thing as auto-tune. So I, I covered the auto-tune feature, right? Well, the telemetry one, new telemetry, does the same thing. So you go to Project Cars 2. I want that track, Intelligent Peaks, blah, 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 right? It, go, it does the exact same thing. Uh, you're just either doing it uh, as a new profile over here, or you're doing it from auto-tune from an existing profile you already have. So just keep that in mind. Uh, no matter which one you're picked on, I would definitely do a duplicate first of it, and then do, and then do the auto-tune afterwards. That way you don't mess up your original one. All right, that's it for this section here for the software. I hope this is helpful for you guys and gals out there. And uh, hopefully this will help you get a better experience with uh, SimVibe because it is an extremely powerful software. And it is definitely the gem of the, uh, of the AccuForce experience uh, I found. Uh, it totally transforms this wheelbase into... Uh, say a regular direct drive wheel uh, that you're limited to just gain force feedback to something you can cater to your liking because what I like will be different than what you like and so on uh, so yeah all right let's get on to the next sections and we'll see you later